Good morning and greetings in the name of Christ, friends. It's July 1st. We're into July now, the thick of summer. Our days have been getting very warm this week, and um, I ate watermelon for lunch today, so I feel like we're really in the summer. And um, it's always refreshing to eat watermelon. Uh, I'm going to continue with a section in this book on how to pray. And he's going to talk about a couple of uh, ways of praying, uh, prayer for solidarity and praying alone. And so we'll, we'll look at both of those. And our verse for today is Psalm 4610, uh, be still and know that I am God. Stillness. When we become truly still, then prayer opening into love happens. To be still is to be utterly simple. The pure soul is like a lens from which all irrelevancies and excrescences, all the beams and motes of egotism and prejudice have been removed, so that it may reflect a clear image of the one transcendent fact within which all other facts are held. Much of what we normally call prayer ultimately is one kind of preparation for this spacious simplicity. Such preparation lights and steadies our interior lamps so that we don't miss the master when he comes in the stillness of the soul's night. Preparation also helps us to absorb the shocks of those moments of coming so that their impact is clear and enduring. We cannot force or anticipate that coming into our own that homecoming, that awareness of the kingdom, or kingdom, as some of our friends are saying now. All we can do is attentively wait on the one we trust to appear. Not wait for. We wait for what we know. We wait in blind trust on the surprising one beyond our shallow knowing. We wait attentively through every moment and activity of the day. Here are two broad forms of prayer that can help prepare the way. Prayer of solidarity, suffering present. Perhaps the most basic and steady prayer we need is one that involves us compassionately with the suffering present in and around us. Mayana Buddhists have a tradition of regularly offering all the merits of their spiritual development toward the release from suffering of all the sentient beings and vow not to enter nirvana or heaven until all have been released. Christians move in the same direction through constant identification with the cross, with the full involvement of the very Son of God in the world's suffering and for its release. Interdependent. We are all in this unfulfilled life together, utterly interdependent. The mingling of our prayer energy for one another is the secret glue and salve and catalyst of authentic community. Without it, we become stuck on ourselves, without all the illusions and complications and adding suffering flowing from that stuckness. The master is not likely to be recognized when we are so clouded. Praying alone, Jesus prayer. Over the past few years, my most steady prayer of solidarity has been based on the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. This ancient, simple prayer is based on Paul's exhortation to pray constantly in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 and on the gospel cries of Lord, have mercy. It was shaped by the early desert fathers and eventually became a classic form of prayer practiced widely to this day, especially among Eastern Orthodox Christians. Historically, the prayer has been flexible in its form except for the constant of the name Jesus. Never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, we hear in Colossians 3.17. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, from Romans 10.13. In some historic uses, it is done in rhythm with breathing, breathing such as Lord Jesus Christ on the in-breath and have mercy, me, with, have mercy on me on the out-breath. So, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. 
I have found this coalescence with breathing very natural. The prayer at first should be done with full concentration for anywhere from five to 20 minutes at a time. <coughs> Allow a short pause after each prayer. Let yourself feel deep warmth, humility, and all positive feelings that may come. Let all wandering thoughts and images gently melt into the prayer. Don't analyze the words, just let them happen to you, trusting their hidden truth. After the words appear to set in you, then they can be continued behind and between everything else you do during the day. After prolonged use, the prayer can spontaneously move the lips to the mind, to the heart, where it prays itself, so to speak. It can culminate in an utterly still, wordless, open, light-filled awareness when the prayer, as Callistos Ware says, ceases to be something we say and becomes something we are. Even without these advanced gifts, I've found that regular use of the Jesus prayer keeps my heart more open, centered, and warmly compassionate at times when I'm sure it otherwise would be more narrow and cold. The prayer becomes a reminder of who I really am, an expression of grace, not fully realized, dependent on further grace for fulfillment, able to ask that I might receive as Jesus promised. The very asking implies a trust in life as ultimately merciful, full of grace, not dependent on my making things happen, but only on my attentive, open participation in what does happen. When I first began using this prayer, I thought it was very selfish and distorting. Compassion was supposed to be self-forgetful and other-directed. Here instead was a constant prayer that seemed to be focused on my isolated self. The very weighty tradition behind the prayer kept me with it, though. Soon I began to notice that its impact melted rather than strengthened the lines between me and others. I realized the truth behind a saying of the Yama Shogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, Rinpoche, compassion has no direction. Compassion is an open warmth that is just there, a wave of divine energy at whose crest no boundaries, no inside and outside exist. With me and others I know who use it, the Jesus prayer has a way of shifting focus through the day. As I see or read of someone suffering, the prayer immediately begins. But without reference to me, instead it becomes simply, Lord Jesus, have mercy on him or her or them, or simply, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Where I once impulsively judged, ignored, or condemned the situation of others and of myself, often enough, now there is a deeper response where I sense my involvement with all that happens and the suffering that lies beneath. I still get angry, hard-hearted, and hurt, but these moments are a little lighter now. Deep down, I know the reality of suffering and grace is there even when I can't feel and respond to these in the moment. So rather than isolating me further, the Jesus prayer has taken me deeper into the midst of the world and yet without becoming lost in it. The prayer, like a beam of light, penetrates to the grace there at the bottom of a situation and often saves me from becoming stuck at the shallower levels of awareness, that insight, paranoia, bitterness, depression, and indolence. The beam of light is not so bright that I can understand easily a given situation and know clearly how to respond. Many times, all I'm clear about is that the situation needs grace and only God knows what form. I don't know specifically what to ask for or what to do. I can only ask for mercy and do what I do, hoping the prayer will affect my openness to God's will. Beautiful. So the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Or him, or her, or them. I think uh, 
this prayer has a power to resonate deeply within us. So I invite you today to think about this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Pray it while you're breathing in. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. It's a little hard to breathe in saying Lord Jesus Christ as I practice it now. See if it cannot resonate deeply with you today. And make that our prayer. And let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on all of us.